It is chapter 2. Test is Thursday, right? Not tomorrow, Thursday. First thing on the test says divide using long division. Can you do that? Yeah. I hope so. Uh, as an example, how about x squared plus 3? And let's do x to the 5th plus 6x to the 4th minus 3x plus 2. Now, I made this problem up, so it might be pretty, might be ugly. We're going to start with x cubed. Cubed, x to the third, do you all agree? <coughs> Goes on top. Any specific spot? Right. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Now I multiply x cubed times the whole thing, x squared plus 3, right? Which is x to the fifth. Oh, I don't have an x cubed spot. So I just put it in the middle in it by an empty spot? Okay. Or 3x cubed. Now what? Change the signs. Change the signs and uh, add. This is what gets a lot of you. When I add, I have 6x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 3x plus 2. Right? Now what? Do I multiply by? 6x squared. 6x squared. Is it six plus 6x squared or minus 6x squared? Plus. plus. And that gives me 6x to the fourth and 18x squared. And I don't have an x squared spot, so I have to add one, right? Right. Change the signs and what? Add. Add. This goes away. I have negative 3x cubed minus 18x squared minus 3x plus 2. Your board looks like it was kind of going weird. Uh, it's, it's not safe on that side. What do I multiply by now? Um, negative 3x. Negative 3x. See, it's perfect up there. So it is negative 3x cubed minus 9x. <laughs> Whoa, that's an x. Change the signs. Wow. It's way out of sync. And I synced it. That corner won't sync. So, <laughs> watch this. Can you get this higher? Negative 18. What does that give me? Negative 18 x squared. Somebody wrote it down. What does it give me? Plus 54. Yes. Can I change the signs? Wouldn't it be minus 54? Because it's 
Yes, it would be. So this is a plus. So I have 6x plus 56. Yes. So my answer is all of this plus what? Is it 56x? 56x, 56x. Over x squared plus 3, right? That was a long problem. Can you do it? Okay. All right. Now, what about synthetic division? Is it? Okay. So if I have x to the fourth minus a divided by x plus 2. Whoever my drop is, please don't. It's annoying on me. Um, is that correct? Can I use synthetic division? Yes. yes. Why? Because it's a single x. It doesn't have a number in front of it. doesn't have a power, right? So what goes in my box? Negative two. Negative two. And what are my numbers? One, zero, 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 negative eight. Okay, only a couple of you said the numbers. Do the rest of you understand where they came from? Yes. All right. What do I do first? Bring down that one. Bring the one down. Yeah. Multiply it by the little number. Yeah. Negative two. Add those. Add? Negative two. Negative two. Yeah, fours. I just have one four out there. Then you bring that bad boy down. Are you all agreeing with this? Yes. yes. Are you with me? He's yeah. just talking. He's just talking, but I want to make sure we're all together. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's the front front of the room. Then you multiply that by negative two. Bring that bad boy down. Then multiply that. So what is my answer? Okay, I'm going to tell you, for some of you, you missed, you did all that right, and you missed getting the answer because you forgot to take it down one x So you got x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 8. Plus what? 8 over x plus 2. And over x plus 2? Those two do plus the remainder. Uh -huh. yeah. And you can only use that whenever the thing is. And, and I'm not tricking you on the test. It says you send that to this. And I only book problems there that you can use them. Because I'm not trying to trick you on that. But if you go back and say, why do I have to do the long division on this one? That's why. Now, the next thing is use the remainder there. What's the difference in synthetic division, which is what we just did, and the remainder theorem? The remainder theorem is just like you used the remainder theorem. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. However, there's one other difference. And I'm going to give you... you C is negative two. Negative two. That's one of the differences. Is I'm already solved for X. Oh. Right? So negative two goes in the box. Remember on the last one I solved for X? That's one of the differences. Hmm. Negative two. What are my numbers? Two, negative six, seven, eight. 
No zeros on this one. Bring what down? Two. Two. Two times negative, negative two. Four. Negative ten. Twenty. Twenty-seven. I expect you to be able to tell me the answer. Right? Okay. Moving right along. This is what it says. Use the factor theorem to determine if the binomial is a factor of x. How do I know if it's a factor? If what equals zero? Equals zero. The, remainder. the remainder equals zero. Correct? Use the factor theorem to determine if the binomial is a factor. my problem. f of x is 2x cubed plus x squared minus 16x minus 8. All right. My factor is x minus 2 radical 2. I'm going to tell you I chose that hard one intentionally. How do I decide if it's a factor? What goes in my box? <laughs> 2 radical 2. Right? My numbers are 2, 1, maybe 16, negative back. Right? Okay. Sorry, Brady, tell me what you step aside. So, what do I do? Bring the 2 down. Multiply these and I get 4 radical 2. You get 1 plus 4 radical 2. 1 plus 4 radical 2. Is it, when I multiply this by this, don't I get 2 radical 2 plus 16? Yes, because when I multiply 2 radical 2 times 4 radical 2, I multiply the numbers and I multiply the radicals. Gives me 8 times 2. So are we good with that? So what, what adds, what do they add to? What goes here? 8. Yes. What's my answer? Yes. yes. Oh, how are we doing so far? Pretty good. Okay. Write a polynomial. 
with the following zeros. x minus 12 times x squared. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now what do I do? Distribute the so f of x yes equals x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 12x. <coughs> Thank you. That's where my board's messed up, seeing where it's crooked there. Okay? Ooh. Because I want to give you a real problem that works. I don't want to make one up. You don't want me to make one up on this one. Oh, wow, I did it. All right, if I have, this is f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared minus x plus 4. Directions are find all the zeros. What are my possibilities? Not three. Oh, I was just saying there are three. Oh, there are three of them. Okay, actually, I think there's six. So it's not by the height of three? There's three answers. There are three answers. Oh, okay. But my possibilities are all the factors of 4 over 1, aren't they? So what are my possibilities? One, two, plus or minus 1. Plus or minus 1. Plus or minus 2. Plus or minus 4. All right. 1, negative 4, negative 1, 4. No, let's go with one. You don't want to do two? Did you cheat and do it on your calculator? Yeah. How do you do that? Oh, you small. Hold up. What? Corbin, did you have a question? Yeah, I did. Um, 
So it's not to the highest degree that you can dose roughly uh, possibilities from it. It's from the previous number. No, it's the last number. Oh, oh, it's the last number. Not at all. All right. Solve the inequality. You know what an inequality is? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to make this up. Could be ugly. So negative 22 fifths is x. Good. Now, my intervals. Start at negative infinity. To what? Negative 22 fifths. With what? A bracket. A bracket. Negative 22 fifths. Negative two. Parentheses. Parentheses. Negative 2 to 2 parentheses. Okay, you all understood the parentheses of brackets? If you look at your paper that I graded, some of you, that's all the only mistakes you make is parentheses of brackets. All right, what am I going to try from the first one? Doesn't that give me, if I do a negative 5 here, negative 1, negative one is less than or equal to 8 fifths. Negative 8 sevenths, isn't it? Does that work? No. What about the next one? Negative four. No. Negative three. Negative three. Doesn't that give me negative three? 
is less than or equal to negative 8 fifths. Is that true? Yes. 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 Let's do zero on the next one. Zero on the next one? Yeah. Three halves is less than negative four. No. I like to use zero. Let's Three. Three. Three fifths is less than eight. Is less than eight. Yes. And that's true. Right? You don't remember these? Yeah. yeah. Fairly simple, aren't they? What was the direction of these? <coughs> um, solve the inequality. Okay. What about variation? Do I need to do variation? Yes. Do one of each. It's going to be quick because I've got a graph to do, right? You've got to know. <laughs> You've got to know. <laughs> Direct, inverse, joint. You got to know which is which, yes? So they're going to be like Z, not oh, no, Z, like E, and like number Z. Just to collect that quantity. Yeah. It's going to be different letters, too, by Yeah. How do you know which one's going to be? The word is is equal. What? I'll, sh I'll show you when I get there. It says y varies directly as x. That means this, doesn't it? Will we be given that on the test? No, I just said you have to know that. You didn't, did you didn't listen, huh? Y varies directly as x. Find the constant only. When x is 18, y is 13. What is k? k is 13 18s. Right? That's all I'm asking you to find it, is k. Right. All right, Miles. P is inversely proportional to Q. That means P equals K over Q. Do you see what is was equal? Oh, yeah. Okay, P is 8, Q is 3. What is K? Twenty-four? Oh, it's K is twenty-four. Okay. And the last one says... Y varies jointly as W and X. Does that mean Y equals K W X? Right? W is 20. Well, we have a 5 and a riot, right? W is 20, x is 0. 0.5, y is 10. What is k? Does 10 equal k times 10? k is 1.
last thing on the test graph. <coughs> what? Oh, was this the one that was like yeah, yeah, from the or whatever? Was this like the thing where it was like A through J? It was like sort of like I can do it on that. Where are the asymptotes? Well, that's in particular. Where are the asymptotes? Uh, X, two. X equals 2, X equals negative 2. Right? <coughs> what? How do you find vertical You remember? Set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. Asymptotes have to be graphed. Now, what is the horizontal asymptote? Nope. There's not one. A over B. Let's look at that. A is the. It's one. They're the numbers in front of the x squared. So it's 1 over 1, which is y equals 1. Is it when the numerator is greater than the denominator? No, when they're equal. When they're equal. No, when, when it's uh, y equals 0. No, when the numerator is less. It's greater than. No. When it's greater it's than, zero, there is no. a and then if it's slant. 1 above, it's a slant. slant. And remember that if you can remember one above is a slant, if it has a slant, it can't have a horizontal. So it would, that would, like this. Does it have a slant? No. All right. Can you graph it? Yes. Or tell me how to graph it? Can't come up with a net real number? I mean, it's at uh, um, negative 3 is at 3.65914. So, does it do this? Yes. Should have a couple numbers there. What about? Don't like the middle one. None of them are really. None of them are good numbers? Not really. Uh, hold on, let me see. What's in the middle? Negative, negative 4, four negative 2.25. Negative 1, negative 2. What'd you say? So right there? Yeah. What is zero? Okay. What is one? Two thirds or negative two thirds? So is it I wasn't sure. Is it doing this? No. no. It, no. It go, it, yeah, it goes down. It kind of it loops up and goes down. Wait, did you just take it back? No. no. Now what? What does it do? How high does it go? Does it go above the x-axis? No. So it kind of does this? Flattens out and 
drop straight down. Exactly. Yeah. Then it has arrows on each end. Yes. Now where's the other part? It's up top. It's up top? I don't know. It's just you don't know. Three one point two. It's up top? Yeah. Gunner was just guessing. He didn't have a calculator. So I wasn't yeah. trusting. Right here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Alright. It may not. It doesn't have to. But when I just don't agree why it's X, wait a minute. Okay, but if that's on the other side of the absence. X is three is right here. Nine? Yeah, but that's so it's right here. I was 